maximization of a function of one variable. So suppose uh, you are the manager of the firm and you desire to maximize the profit of the firm. And let us say the profit function is dependent upon how much of output you are producing. That's true also. Uh, and let us also say that this is the way the profit function is drawn. Let us say. So we are not getting into how and why of this right now. Let us just say that this is the profit function. This is the way profit function is drawn, right? So we can very easily see that this curve is getting maximized at this particular point. This is the maximum. All of us can see that. And uh, this is the level of output, which is giving me the maximum profit, right? Q star. That is also true. Okay. Let us say you start with this Q1 and this gives me this pi one. And if I keep on increasing my output, my profit is also increasing. Let me just put this in and then I'll explain what I mean. Let's say this is Q1, this is Q2, this is pi one and this is pi two. You are the manager. Of course, you want to maximize profit. And if you knew this graph, then you would also know that this Q star is maximizing your profit. But in reality, it is not that simple that you would know that which output level is going to maximize your profit. So what you do is basically you start with certain level of output. You try to find out profit. You increase the output level and you try to judge whether profit is increasing or not. So if by an increase in output, your profit is also increasing, you feel worked up and you feel motivated. You think that, okay, it is better for me to produce more. Because what you realize in your head is that if you produce more, your profits are also increasing. Uh, but then profits are not going to increase at all output levels. This also makes sure that supposedly if you start producing more than Q star, then what will happen? You have gone beyond the optimal profit. So your profit will start falling instead of increasing. So, so manager, may try the output levels Q1 and Q2, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, and you may be expecting that you will be getting the profit levels, of course, pi one and pi two respectively from that by producing Q1 and Q2. Uh, so you have increased the output level from Q1 to Q2 in the expectation that the profits are going to increase. If you knew it beforehand that uh, if supposedly if you keep on increasing output even beyond Q star, your profit will, instead of increasing, it will start falling. So if you knew beforehand that there is no guarantee that if you will increase the output, your profits will always increase, you would be more cautious. So Abhitak, what we have done for the different output levels, you have these profit levels. You are increasing the output level from Q1 to Q2 in the expectation that the profits are going to increase. So basically, the, this is the change in profit which you are getting from increasing the output level from Q1 to Q2. And this is the change in the output level which you are getting from increasing the output level from Q, Q2 to Q, or Q1 to Q2. This is nothing but the change in profit upon change in output, right? So if by increasing output, your profits are increasing, then manager is going to be motivated she will be increasing output and the profits are going to increase, right? But for output levels,
beyond Q star, right? Output levels beyond Q star, profit starts falling. Means this thing is going to be negative. Instead of profits increasing with an increase in output level, for to the right of Q star, if you keep on increasing the output level, the profits are going to fall. And the limit of limit of delta pi by delta q for very small changes. in Q is called nothing but the derivative of the function. It's called the derivative of the function d pi by d, right? It's called the derivative of the function d pi by d. So at q equals to q1, derivative of the function is d pi by dq. q is equal to q1, that is greater than zero. Right. And for the output level, let's say q3, the profits are falling. This is at Q equals to Q3. So levels are going to fall. Hmm. Are going to fall. So what is the what is the value of the derivative at Q star? It intuitively it seems that it is going to be equal to zero. Right, the derivative of u equals to q star. This is going to be equal to zero. Why we why we are saying so? Uh, for values q less than q star, this derivative is positive beta. For values q greater than q star, this derivative is negative, right? So, and derivative is nothing but the slope of the function at the point. So, slope is increasing to the left of q star and slope is decreasing to the right of q star, right? So at Q equals to Q star, slope of pi equals to FQ is zero. Means D pi by DQ is equal to zero, right? So for a function to attain its maximum value, the derivative at that point must be equal to zero. Let me just write that for you. For a function of one variable, to attain its maximum value. At some point, the derivative at that point, if at all the derivative is existing, the derivative at that point, 
if that derivative is existing. If it exists, must be zero. So basically what you are saying is that the profits are going to be maximum <coughs> equal to zero or uh, d pi by dq is equal to zero. But note that this is just a necessary condition. It is not a sufficient condition. I'll give you an example. This is just a necessary condition. It is not the sufficient condition. Why? Supposedly you have the function like this. So if your profit function, instead of the way we have drawn it, it is drawn like this. So here also at Q equals to this guy, your d pi by dq is equal to zero. The slope of the derivative is a uh, slope of the function is equal to zero at this particular point. But is this a max? This is not a max. This is a min, in fact. This is not a max. So at q equals to, let's say, q1, at q equals to q1, d pi by dq is equal to zero, but it is not a max. But this is not a max. This guy is not a max. So for there is something else also which should be satisfied, your second order conditions. So this is just your first order condition. This has to be satisfied. But if you want that the optimal which you have found out from the first order condition is indeed a max, there is something else also which has to be satisfied. There is something else also which has to be satisfied. And what is that something else? So you would want so if you have the function like this, then it is definite that this guy is the maximum. This is the max. Uh, this is the max. And uh, and uh, the derivative of the derivative is less than zero at this particular point. So what I mean by this is this, that is, so you have profits out here, you have quantity out here. In case if the manager, he's right, the profit available by either <laughs> reducing a bit more or less than Q star must be smaller, must be smaller than that available from Q star, right, from Q star. Uh, so if you are producing less, so let's say you are sitting here, then the amount of the profit which you are getting from producing, let's say Q1 is less than the amount of the profit which you are getting from Q star. By producing a bit more, Here also, the amount of the profit which you are getting from producing Q2 
is less than the amount is less than the amount of the profit which you are getting by producing at Q star. Because in case if this is not true, if this is not true, then you can actually produce a little less or little more. So for example, if in this particular case this is not true, so by producing a little less than Q one, you can actually have more profits. Yeah. Or by producing a little more than Q one, you can actually have more profit. So you can't say that Q one is a max. Q one is a max. So if this is not true, so it means it means that the function it means that d pi by d q should be greater than zero for q less than q star and d pi by d q should be less than zero for q greater than q star right in other words in other words means you go beyond q star your profit should be falling it means that the uh, the d pi by dq itself should be decreasing d pi by dq must be decreasing so the derivative of a derivative Called the second derivative so d two pi by d q two should be less than zero at. Q equals to Q star, right? This is what the second order condition is. So for for maximum, you need two conditions. One, d pi by dQ should be equal to zero, and d two pi by dQ two should be less than zero, right? So I am doing only that much of maths which is required for me as a very basic thing in my micro course, right? Chaliye, thank you, beta.